countless races. Speaking of flowing locks, we also have with us Lynn Burke. Lynn, thank you so much for coming to join us. Thank you to, to uh, invite me. Not at all. Of course, a <laughs> former champion in the under 23s. Can you tell us a little bit about what the girls warming up behind us just now will be feeling before they head into this fantastic race? I think uh, all these girls are very stressful and uh, yeah, I think uh, they will give everything and uh, focus. I think she's really focused on what she, what she wants to do and on uh, on all the trial to remind uh, who, uh, where she she wants to, to pass uh, in the downhill, to uh, how many laps to, to do what uh, she wants to do during yeah. a race. Really concentrating yeah, on what is the yeah, come and sure. picturing it. Yeah, We've of sure. course spoken a little bit about the, the course already. What do you make of it here at Novemesto? Uh, Novemesto, it's a really hard race for sure with a lot of hard climb and uh, also downhill really rocky and uh, yes, uh, the, the weather here is really changed and sometimes like yesterday you can have uh, a little bit of, of rainy, of rain yep. and uh, all the track can change in only one night so you must uh, you must to, to adapt yourself uh, all the time. You won here last year. Yeah. So yeah. good experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like it. Yeah, but uh, two years ago I brought my uh, pelvis here, so... Oh. <laughs> That's uh, not, not such a good experience. No, no, not all the time, but... Uh, no, well, what, what, what do you need to have to, to win a race here on this course? I think here you need to have... I think all like all the races, you need to be in shape and you need to be focused in the uphill, in the downhill. You need to like uh, uh, you need to be concentrated about how the girls do during all the race to like um, to to see uh, she's in shape, she's not in shape uh, when she wants to to do an attack uh, when. Like all of this thing. Uh, what about these roots? I mean, the whole track is actually covered by roots. It, it's really hard to find your rhythm, isn't it? Um, what? <laughs> to find your rhythm. I mean, there, there are uh, roots everywhere. It's very bumpy. Yeah. It, isn't it difficult to ride on a course like this? With, yeah, with, with... Yes, more if it's rainy. But uh, for sure, it's a really hard race here. But now all the tracks are really, really hard. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Super stuff. Well, it's, you're someone who's, of course, really understood how this course works. We've already seen the short track from earlier in the weekend. We wanted to just take a look at some of the contenders so far. But what what do you make of Ronja Blutlinger, who, of course, won the short track? She on won the Thursday. short track, and she's a very technical rider. I think she's one of the fastest in the descents. But, uh, yeah, also the climbs here, they are very steep. Uh, and I'm wondering, actually, if she can make it uh, that quick uh, up to these climbs but if it comes down to a descent or it comes down to a sprint she's one of the strongest right okay so the sprint is what we're going to look out for with her and these will all be women that you've raced against as well yeah. Lynn, including noelle bury who came second yeah, yeah um, i don't race a lot with noelle because she won last year uh, two world cups and uh, she, uh, she she won in uh, the us in canada and i i've I've been not here, yeah. but uh, yes, she's really, really strong and uh, very, like, she, she can climb, she can down, she can do everything. So. She can do everything, oh my goodness. And like what you if, can. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, if it's coming from Lynn, then that is a, that's a huge compliment, right? But I think so, yeah, for sure. <laughs> if you weren't here last year, yeah. And, but what, what, what decided actually to, for you to, to make it um, and ride in the elite category this year? Because you are still under 23. Yeah, yeah. I said I'm in my second year in under 23 and um, I take the decision with my entourage, with my, uh, my family, with the coach, with the federation. And we take uh, this, um, 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 what? Uh, Make Take this plan? choice yeah. because uh, yes, because uh, I think um, I like this. I can learn a lot yeah. with uh, yeah, yeah. and and gain a lot of experience with. Uh, but do you have the Olympics in mind too, Paris, yes. 2020, next for, year? For sure, um, this is for the Olympics. We we do this decision to. Because I need to learn if I want to take my chance, but I know we have in France uh, Pauline and Loana before me and some other girls. So I know for, for now I'm not, I don't have my place in the Olympic Games, but uh, if I can learn to, to progress, to improve myself, I will take all the chance. 
brilliant sure. stuff. And, and we'll see how it shapes out. But of course, you've been done so successful already in the under 23s at such a young age. It's, it's really cool to have you with us to talk through all of this. Um, Sophie Hebby Pedersen, do you, you, what do you know of her as a rider? Yeah, I raced a lot last year with uh, Sophie, and she's really strong and uh, really powerful. I made a sprint last year with her in Lanza Ride, and uh, yes, she, she, she's very, very strong until the end of the race. So, yeah, I think in, in her mind, she's really strong too. So, it's We a really, really, really strong girl. We also have wanted to take a quick look at Madigan Monroe of the USA. But she has a strong team around her, the Track Factory Racing Team. Uh, she has a good support, uh, good uh, riders around her, experienced riders. Uh, she did a lot of races already in the US, so I expect uh, her to do a good race here too. Yeah, she's one of the favorites. For oh, sure. are you about to pick the correct winner again of this race? No, I didn't pick we've her. had this challenge. We've <laughs> had this challenge with the with the pundits and with the presenters no, to I figure took, it out. Uh, Sophie Hobie as a you as took a Sophie Hobie. Yeah, what, what what prompted that? I think she's she's very strong. What you said, uh, very strong in a sprint finish last year in the 23. Um, she showed her strength already last year. I think this course suits her, also the, the, the technical uphills, uh, the powerful uphills, the punchy climbs. Uh, and when it comes down to a sprint, she's very fast. One person we haven't actually spoken too much about, and I'm interested in the context of what you say about breaking your pelvis, going through this race, having a big injury, and then coming back to win it, is Zoe Cuthbert, because she not damaged as badly as that, but she's silver medalist at the Commonwealth Games. We saw her crash, massive crash. I think we even have the pictures of it here today. And, and I'm interested to see how that plays out for her, but... Yeah, the, that crash, uh, what she had uh, in the short track actually was uh, impressive, how quick she was back on her bike, because even before the last rider passed her, she was riding again, and but that crash was, yeah, it was terrible to see. But luckily she didn't hurt herself too bad, and... Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if she can do well here on the, on this hard uh, cross-country Olympic course. That's something different. It's something different, yeah, and that's a huge part of mountain biking as well, recovering when it when it all goes wrong. We can hear, in fact, from Zoe just now. Zoe Cuthbert, you had a fantastic start out of the gate, a bit of a manoeuvre. How did you recover for, for today's under-23? Yeah, I'm all good, just a little bit bruised up, but the aim for today is just to make it around the second corner. <laughs> That's going to be a good start. Where's the focus point for you on today's course? Um, I really love this track. I love how technical it is, and I'd really like to be able to hit out those downhills and feel really strong on those. So that's the aim. Fantastic, mate. Have a great race. I'm glad to see you on the starting line. Thank so you. Just going everywhere to get these interviews is Josh Carlson. Good work from him. We just felt a little raindrop, didn't we, as we were standing here waiting for the race to start, but it will do it in a moment as we head out on course. Let's take a quick look, shall we, at our, our course predictions but before we let Lynn go. Uh, Lynn, we can maybe take the mickey out of us for some of our uh, inept predictions. I'm not sure. Who did You went for Hemby Pedersen in the end. Yes, yes. And we've spoken a little bit about her. In fact, we've got a few pictures of the riders in the, in the pen just behind us as we build up to the, the to sending you off to the commentary booth. Here are our predictions, if you want to have a little look. Um, we went for Sophie Pedersen. I, I spoke to Ella McLean Howell. Ronya Blocklinger as well was who three of the people gone. Who would you be picking? What? I don't know. Who would you be picking to win the race? Uh, Just very, very quickly, Lynn. Sophie or Ronya, I think. Sophie or Ronya. Yeah. It's easy. She's, she's, she's not only a brilliant pundit, she's also a predictor. We'll find out. Thank you so much for joining us, Lynn. We'll head over now to Rick. Hello everyone, welcome to the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup, the first under 23 race of the season. Under 23 women just forming up on the start line as we speak, ahead of what promises to be an absolutely stellar battle of some of the best young talents in the sport. Madigan Munro from the Trek Factory Racing Squad in the national champs jersey of the United States of America. Gives you a clue that she might be quite quick. Sina Van Thiel from Germany. For the Lexware mountain bike team, ready for this one. Emily Johnson then for Trek Future Racing, part of that. 
development squad. We'll see her presently. Adela Holubova taking the line ahead of her. There's Kira Baum. Ellen McLean Howell from Great Britain on bike number 39. Heavy Sophie Pedersen from Denmark, riding for Villiers Pirelli factory team. Season favorite Ronya Blurk Blinger from Switzerland. Well, one pre season favorite, a tried and tested favorite has just joined me in the booth. Bart Brenchens, excited for this one? Yeah, for sure. That uh, woman in the 23, always a lot of excitement in this race, too. Yep, there is confirmation then off your start list. Bart, some standout names in there. Yeah, definitely the first one, uh, Sophie Haby Pettersen, strong lady from the Denmark. Yeah, there are a couple, a couple of Louisa Daubermann, Germany. Finja Lip from Germany, strong always as well. Bit of a headwind into the first corner bar, just looking at the booth uh, window and seeing the flags and the, the flags and trees sort of bending a wee bit. Not yeah, there's ideal. more wind than uh, before this today. So there's definitely uh, some headwind here on the start finish straight. Here we go then. Are we going to see Blurklinger slingshot her way towards that first corner? As we wait for the last bits of tape to be removed. Two start laps for these under 23 women ahead of four laps of the full circuit as the tape is removed and you can just see the focus. It's all eyes on the new start system. And we are racing once again here in Nova Mesto, Namarave as they head up over the bridge. Sophie Haby, a fast start, leading here in the first few metres of the race. Yeah, the Villiers rider making herself, making her presence felt at the front of this one. You can see the dust getting kicked up, still pretty dry out there. We have had some rain today, but not enough to really affect this course. Actually, it became better, I think, with yeah. the rain from last night. Uh, of course, this morning it was still, uh, the routes were very slippery, but uh, in general, made it a bit more ri better rideable and also the dust has gone now so two start laps plus four laps full laps yep so the start laps 2.6 kilometers in length a bit wider Bart a bit of a chance to thin the herd out as we see Blurglinger safely to the front of this one in the, the red jersey on the live bike at the front yes yeah, she did a really strong race uh, last Thursday short track but also a very technical rider she is. Uh, if yep. it comes down to uh, technical skills, the downhills, the technical descent over here, she's one of the world's best. Someone who uh, our colleague Josh Carlson, who races enduro for the Giant Factory off-road team, really, really rates. He says she is the real deal, she's the real package. Sarah Kortinova with the number five on her bike coming to the front. Actually, her short track wasn't that good at all. And but Santa short Cruz track is, uh, yeah, you need to be powerful. It's more, uh, yeah, you need to have more power. Uh, it's more of a flat race, but Sarah Kortinova very strong on the climbs. And now already in front of the race.
And you have to be powerful mentally as well for cross-country Olympic part. There's lots of thinking ahead. It is, yeah. It's you have to suffer actually for one and a half hour almost. Yeah. This race is a little bit shorter, one hour fifteen. But uh, yeah, it's it's a very hard discipline. And you see how slippy it is with all these rocks. You see those big chunks of rock there just coming through the dust. And it is kind of one of the features of this Nova Mesto Namarave circuit is that there's a lot of loom around, but there's also a lot of big chunky rocks in and among stuff. Yeah, we, we saw, saw uh, we saw some uh, technical problems as well in the men yeah, in the 23 on race. The 23 uh, race, we saw punctures playing a part in that. I'll not ruin it for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, but worth checking that one out. But yeah, I mean, mountain biking, you're always making that compromise between setup and speed, and sometimes a rock can come out of nowhere. Yeah, tire choice is so important these days. Bart, full drives today, though I take a full dry tire, full dry setup. Yeah, full dry setup, definitely. There are some dark clouds actually coming in, but I don't think uh, it's, it's going to rain anymore. The weather forecast says uh, actually some sunny conditions late afternoon. It's kind of what it does here, though, isn't it? It's either it's either warm or it dumps it here. It is, yeah, but it, but also it has been cold, like actually cold, just cold. cold for you. Yeah. I've been I've been perfectly comfortable. <laughs> this is this is the premium nice. operating temperatures for myself. I'm like I'm enjoying this. <laughs> You're enjoying it. Yeah, silly. it's good. Yeah, <laughs> I've been in my T shorts, t-shirt all the time. <laughs> Sara Kortinova, Sophie Heby, Ronja Blocklinger. Yep, coming yep. round. Still Leading this over first here. start loop. Yep. So, Bart, on the start loop, what is priority number one? Just staying safe, making a bit of room for yourself? What are you thinking about? Yeah, it? room for yourself, uh, positioning, uh, it's probably important. Uh, but yeah, you can see here on this climb, it's stretched out immediately. And uh, yeah, Sophie Heavy, she's pushing hard. And she will test herself, she will test her contenders here on uh, already this early in the race. But now again, try to sit in the second position. Sarah. Not giving everything, but she has to stay in front of the race. Sarah Cortnovis on that Santa Cruz RockShox Pro Team bike. She's at the front on the number five. Zoe Burkhardt a little bit further down after that crash from last Thursday. Zoe Cuthbert, yeah, an absolutely huge crash. If you've been following along on the UCI Mountain Bike World Series social media channels, you'll have seen a few angles of that one. A proper uh, bike in the air job, and remarkable that she has taken the start line today. But she was up and ready to go again before the last rider had even passed her. She, uh, her, uh, I don't think you could call it an excuse, but her reasoning was that uh, she'd been that focused on getting the whole shot off the line that she'd forgotten to unlock her suspension, and then she just absolutely detonated in that first turn. Yeah, but yeah. Um, fair play to her, back on the bike and having to go down through these steps. You can see just how blown out and dry it is between the roots. Sophie Heby leading. Sarah Kortinova. Ronja. Ronja blocking on second place. Yeah, Puri and third, two Swiss then, towards the front of this one. So we could be out on 16th place after that crash, what we said on Thursday. Yeah. And there won't be too much changes to these bikes, of course. They've got to run the same, uh, the same frame as they do in short track for the cross-country Olympic. There will be some set-up tweaks, maybe a couple of teeth less in the front chain ring and just some general sort of comfort settings engaged, but very minor touches, Bart. Yeah, actually, it, it, riders have to, to, to use the same bike. Uh, of course, in short track racing, probably the, the, the um, suspension is locked all the time. But even in uh, this short track with all these drops, yeah, it's better yeah. to unlock it, Zoe. <laughs> Just yeah. <laughs> say it again. But uh, even I saw in the short track as well, most of the riders they were using their dropper seat post, uh, yeah, for their center of gravity to bring that down a little bit. Yep. Uh, even when the, when the course almost is completely flat, so they use it for for every inch. Cross-country so. racing was pretty late to adopt the uh, the dropper seat post, but now it's a firm fixture. Pretty much all these bikes running it. We saw a few in the short track going for the the rigid, the, the rigid, rigid seat post, yeah. especially Adrian Boishy, who won the uh, the men's race. So it was had a rigid right. post. But if you are the winner, it's the right choice. Yeah, if you were the winner, you get to call it whatever you want. But 
No, the, uh, the dropper post, uh, the, the seat post that allows you to drop the saddle down into the frame and then raise it again with a flick of a lever on the bars. It's really revolutionised cross-country racing, just as it has all of mountain biking, really. One of the big... Yeah, you, you told me some interesting data, how many times a lap you use a dropper seat post. Uh. Yeah, Matthias Flukiger told me he reckoned that he didn't use it that much. Uh, and it was actually... That was a suspension lockout, actually, he was talking about. It was 30 or 40 times, he reckoned, but I reckon even more than that for the for the dropper post. A lot of the time, Bart, as well, it can... You're not even fully dropping it. You're just dropping it slightly out of the way. Sometimes even for climbing, it can be beneficial. It is, yeah, yeah. I, I found out the same, and I did Cape Epic earlier this year. I used my dropper seat post even on the, the, the more... Yeah, the, the single yeah. tracks, just to relax and just to sit in a, in a different position for just a short time. So here we go. Already a small gap for Sophie Haby Pettersen from Denmark. Yeah, it's a decent gap, you'd have to say, already at yeah. the end of yeah. start loop one. Strong in the climbs, but also strong in the descent. It's not a bit of a confusing feeling there, Bart. We saw her check over her shoulder, no one's with her. Well, there's Blerklinger now. Yeah, a little bit of a gap to Onya Blocklinger already. Blocklinger. So you can see just the right hand side there off your picture to the riders left is a tech feed zone they have to pull actually off the racetrack proper into it it can cost a couple of bike lengths but small trade when it comes to getting some uh, some water some nutrition a bit of food i'm guessing they won't be eating or taking on extra water bar on these start loops though that's kind of they'll stay out Probably they don't need it that early in the race, uh, especially now. They know as well uh, if you're entering that feed zone, it costs a little bit, a little bit of time, a few extra seconds, and it, uh, it might affect uh, your position in the race. So uh, probably they have been starting with a little bit more fluid in their bottles and decide to take the next one uh, a few, few uh, laps later. Yeah, that's one of the remarkable things about cross-country racing. We mentioned it in the, the under 23 men's race, is that when you see them take on a new bottle, that is not a fully brimmed bottle that you or I would take on a bike ride. That is a carefully measured out, the exact <laughs> amount of moisture <laughs> they've worked out over the course moisture, of a yeah, lap. That's how it is, yeah. Such yeah. is the hunt for speed in this sport at the minute. It really is enjoying a technical era and an attention to detail. It's just pushing these athletes on faster and faster with every race. And all the little things add up, don't they, Bart? They do, yep. Each gram on the bike counts. That's how the mechanics work, that's how the riders are. That's definitely my excuse to buy more bike stuff in the off-season anyway. I don't know <laughs> if it quite translates to any more speed, but... You can see this pack now heading out on to start loop two. Emily Johnson in that group two from Canada. Sophie Heavy Pedersen, though, not looking back just now. Strong rides. The pack is there, though, Bart. She hasn't absolutely, she hasn't disappeared up off the road just yet. Another Danish strong rider. The winner in the man in the 23, Oliver Holfoy. And now again in the man and the woman in the 23, Sophie Heavy Pedersen leading. Ronja Blocklinger pushing hard, trying to close that gap. But this is a hard climb in that star loop. Just in the star loop, they have to do this climb over here. American Munro, the, the US champion in that group, too. Here we go, gives you an idea of the speed down here. Aerodynamic position. Fasting, descending here. On the Villiers machine. Yeah. Different brand at the front part. Um, we haven't seen Actually, them. Willier Pirelli, uh, we s the team exists yeah. already for a while. It has been a uh, track before, but Villiers already since last year. Another brand that we're perhaps more used to seeing on the road as well, coming over to mountain bike, and they've been making... They have some nice uh, mountain bikes, yeah. actually, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do. So it's a big team. They have a, a marathon uh, part of the team, too. 
So they must have been racing uh, in this afternoon in the marathon, uh, what we have here in Nova Mastro, number yeah, half of two. Yeah, the, the UCI uh, mountain bike cross-country marathon World Cup kicked off earlier on the day with the marathon of Nova Mesto Namarave earlier on the day. Marathon just about the toughest test of uh, a mountain biker you can get. One of them is a very accomplished marathon rider sat beside me. If you fancy it, go yourself. Head over to UCIMTBWorldSeries.com. Hit open racing. Still plenty more marathons to enter this season and a few entries open. Bart, what would be your, uh, your big advice for entering a marathon? What would you go for? Take enough of take enough energy with you. Enough energy, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Bars, gels, anything. <laughs> yeah, drinks. Anything you can get your hands on. Yeah, there's and, a couple of good ones left. I quite fancy the marathon of Finale Ligure. That would be a ah, nice, beautiful, place. Yeah. Ah, really nice place. Yeah, yeah plenty is. of places to relax with uh, a gelato and maybe think, even a beer. I oh, I, crash! I think every, every, every part of the world has its own character. Also, the, mar the marathon over here uh, around Nova Mesta Marav, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful area over here. Yeah, and it's uh, it's one of the best things about mountain biking, isn't it? Get to Getting to experience the different trails and terrain of foreign countries. It is, yeah. The marathon racing definitely uh, different from uh, Cross Country Olympic, where the riders have to do uh, a race on a small lap i would say a, lot, a small course four kilometers long a lot of steep climbs technical features in it yeah the marathon lap here 60 kilometers in length and there were options and to they do. had to do it twice yeah they can do it twice and 20 or you can do it once i think i'd enter for the twice one and probably just end up doing it once so we are then a fast start for sophia heavy patterson today And that is Tania Kaluri going with her for Tumas Maxim Racing, teammate of Alessandra Keller. Ralph Neff, the team manager of that team. Ralph Neff, a former uh, top flight elite racer himself and somebody who has got a keen eye for picking these young talents out of the Swiss system and really developing them. Oh! Setting that bike down on the rider's left of your screen there, right in a hole. And Sophie Heavy Patterson set up absolutely dialed, no problems at all there. You can see the bottom of this climb then two options, left or right, A and a B line, but we've seen all weekend, not much to choose between them in terms of time. Kaluri in second now. Yeah, Kaluri is doing a good job. Yeah, Only she's, six seconds left now. She's broken through from that second pack and is right now into second place. Garnier in fourth ahead of Bury. Johnson, Monroe. You see these two lines here, really not much in it, Bart. No, actually they're equal in uh, length and uh, difficulty as well. Uh, Riders, they will take different lines most of the time as well. They like to have a free lane in front of them, so that's most of the time the reason why they choose a line or a different line. Yeah, right at the start of a cross-country Olympic race. A lot of the problems can occur when you get a big pack of riders going into the technical climb at once, and there's a bottleneck, and if one rider has to get off, the rest of them are off and running as well. And this is, uh, we saw this in the last race, this in one shot is Nova Mesto Namarada. You've just done an absolutely long bursting climb, 180 degrees, you're straight back down into a technical descent. Roots coming out of the loam everywhere. Lots of line choice, lots of potential for disaster. It's a great track here, Bart, isn't it? A lot of roots here in this uh, descent too. And they're all starting to come out now. Really. Yeah, the, 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 actually the, it, it becomes worse for the riders. It is, one, it is one of the, the dark arts of mountain bike racing, is adjusting your riding and your line choice throughout the weekend as a track develops, as those roots and rocks start coming out of that deep, dark loom. And here we see that, the replay. Just watch her set this bike down here. Flying over these drops. Perfectly done. Suspension set up. Suspension setup. Oh, absolutely crucial. And that's that great to see. Roots. Yeah, bike just soaking it all up, letting you get on with your own business. Full suspension bikes now rule the roost in cross country racing because they are, because they can do this. They're worth so much time everywhere. Yeah. It saves so much energy, and especially here on the course. 
on this course in over Master Namorave. Of course, both units as well. Air sprung, coil and oil in cross country is basically done. Makes adjustment really easy and it's lighter. Kinia Kaluori now on second place with seven seconds back. Nine with for Ronja Blocklinger. new feature of the Cross Country World Cup is this tech zone area here. So the tech zone and the feed zone is separate to the racetrack. If riders need a feed, if they need a bottle, they will have to split into the feed area to grab that bottle. If they have an issue with their bike and they need a new wheel, they need a new chain, they'll have to split to the furthest left lane to pick up that uh, a piece of equipment that they need. Then they will join back onto the main circuit, complete their lap. It's about three to five seconds slower to come into the tech zone, but riders will have to choose because this is their only feed of the entire course. There is a tech at the top of the climb, at the very top of the hill before the final descent, but this is their only feed. So you'll see riders grabbing a very full bottle here, and this will be the only feed and the only opportunity they get to have a, fit, have a drink and uh, have a gel. You'll see a lot of riders getting a gel on the start straight. You'll see a lot of riders taking their, their drink when they can and their water. This section is very calm, but it can be the most chaotic section of the entire race. We saw last year Nino Schurter got a flat, so hopefully it's calm in here until the chaos starts. Here we are then, there is your top 10. Canadian Johnson rounding it out for track future racing. Track Future Race and the development squad. Yeah, very well see. organized. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of talented riders uh, together in that team, men, women. Good to see that. Yeah, and we are starting to see that across the, the different formats of the World Cup race and a lot of the big manufacturers developing these satellite squads, I guess you'd call them, in motor racing, where they get to develop the young talents, bring them through and see who gets to jump onto the factory and team. And you see also more road teams, uh, yeah. like Pro to Road teams are doing the same. They have uh, yeah, also development teams, uh, and also they use mountain bike riders to take part of a development team. And uh, they know if you have the skills and being a, a strong rider in mountain bike, you have the skills to be a good road, a road rider too. Certainly we are seeing more and more of those uh, cross-discipline athletes, the, the Tom Pidcocks, Matthew Van Der Poels, really at the front of uh, well, basically every race they enter, has to be said. But Tomorrow we see Pidcock again. We see Pidcock again tomorrow. It will be hard for him to do it again. Uh, and we, he won it last year, but tomorrow it's a strong, a strong, field. <laughs> strong field tomorrow. But crucially, Tom Pidcock as well has never lost a cross-country Olympic race here. So that's uh, that's two elite that's level, two junior yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's also kind of a pressure, I would say. I don't know if he feels. I think the only pressure, the only pressure he's got is in his tires. I think that's about it. I think he gets on a bike and just wins. That's it. Maybe in his suspension. Maybe too. in his suspension as well. Yeah. Other than that, hopefully. Other than that, zero. Yeah. If you missed the short track, do go and check it out. Tom Pitcock. You're unlikely to see a performance like it. Stone last as he crossed the line at the end of lap one. Runya Blockinger now leading this race to the win. Flirtlinger in the lead. She came back with Ginia Caliori. So it's a group of three at the front now. And let's have a look if they can make it as well on their bike. You can see how slick those rocks are, Bart, up there. They're absolutely treacherous in the dry, never mind the wet. Technical climate, that is. And there's some slow-mos from the track. See the abuse these bikes The tires, take. the roots. How difficult it is to ride on the terrain like this. It's bumpy everywhere. Yeah, on the big 29-inch wheels, you kind of want to hit everything as square as you can, and it's not always a luxury that you're afforded in cross-country racing when the pace is that high. So you see, drop a seat post down for Into this woman. End. It's a great rocky section here, Bart. It is. Different lines, actually, here are able to ride. You can see just how much time the front two have put into Kaluri on that section just by nailing those lines as well. And that is why we've seen such advances in the descending ability of both bikes and riders in cross country. Blurtlinger yeah. even found a bit of style in there. Yeah, we know Ronja Blocklinger is a very strong uh, descender and uh, she opened the gap to uh, Ginia Kaluori. 
Sophie Heavy, she's with her. But a small gap now to the third place. So, Genia Caloria has to work hard to close that gap again. I think she's able to do it on a, on a climb like this. A very steep climb Here in front of them. And a long one. Yeah, that is just about as much flat pedaling as they get on this course outside the start finish straight, and then it's straight back up again. Yeah, they are. In a front famous of the big climb. A famous, famous climb, this one, Bart. Loads of places to attack. We've seen some big names chuke it out on this one over the years. Kaluri. Probably one of the best has still been uh, Nina Schurter against uh, Jaroslav Blau. Oh, that was incredible, yeah. <laughs> I think most. <laughs> Most of the dirt that you can now see those routes through was removed by <laughs> Kohavi and Schurter up there that year. By them. Yeah. Yeah, but all these fans on the side, uh, yeah, it's so good. For the first time here on this climb, in this race today. Yaroslav Kohavi, of course, the big Czech hero. And Runja Blocken has shown her strength. Yep. The pack aren't that far behind them, Bart. No, 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 not at all. They are still in touch, and they can see each other. That helps uh, motivate a lot as well. Nomi Garnier on the spot there, number 12. Noel Burry in that group. Emily Johnson. Madigan Monroe. Madigan Monroe in the Stars and Stripes on the number 10 track. Yep. The Super Caliber. One of the real top flight. Race packages that trek. Suspension unit tucked away under the top tube of it can be removed with three bolts. Incredibly, what the mechanics are telling me. This is an absolutely brutal climb. If you actually look at the surface of it, just coated in roots, none of which want to give you any traction to help you get up it. Flying over these drops. Great feeling to do it like this. Yep, Melina Drelak, the Polish rider, first through there. A group of three leading this race. Ginia Kaluori back in the lead. Yeah, drops, drops the saddle down ahead of this descent. She's struggling a little bit with the speed of the first two. Yeah, you get you get the feeling, Bart, that she's maybe uh, clinging to the coattails a wee bit on this one. Off this drop, vertical drop, they call it. You can cut, yeah, you can you can hit the backside of it though. It's not too flat, is it? There is a slope on the backside of it. It's just yeah, very hard to see. Yeah, yeah. There's the, the, there's the option to take a B line as well. Yeah. B line, of course, a lot slower requiring basically you, you end up putting an S bend into it and losing all your speed. It's really deceptive that drop. You you roll up to it, you can't see where you need to be, yeah, what line you need to be on. There's a blind gap in front of you. Madigan Monroe. Well, Burry in that group. Emily Johnson, Sarah Kostinova. We saw Riley Amos doing a really, really nice line over the rider's right-hand side. They're on the back side of that really? route. Yeah, no, it was it was tasty before it, um, before disaster struck for him earlier on this evening. So if we have Patterson then, Pavilier Pirelli factory team out front, all three of them still together. So this is the first tech zone where they can get some technical assistance. Only technical Only assistance. Only technical assistance, yeah, no feed or bottles in there. That uh, second uh, zone, tech feed zone, there the riders can take uh, a bottle, nutrition, so there's a special feeding zone. Are you getting much... Um, much information from the mechanics at that point, Bart. Will your team be telling riders what's going they're on doing, around Yeah, them? yeah, they're, they're, they're telling you everything. Uh, most of the, actually, at least our team uh, have radio contact with each other, the, the mechanics, the masters. So uh, with, in between uh, Tech Zone 1 and Tech Zone 2, and some uh, people around the course. 
and they will uh, inform the riders uh, with all the details, uh, which position they are, the, the gaps in between the riders, uh, yeah, to motivate them. Yeah, so 25 seconds now within the chase group. Some, sometimes, yeah, motivation it is just roaring and shouting. It's... Yeah, and also with uh, so many fans sometimes around the course, it's really hard to inform the riders uh, about your situation. Well, that's what a lot of the uh, elite level... Oh, Blurklinger. She's so fast in the descent. Throwing it down to flat there, great to see. Gritted her teeth on landing as if it maybe wasn't in the plan on takeoff, but she yeah, got the see, wheels down. Uh, Ginia Caliori, she's struggling to hold the pace of uh, Ronja Blurklinger in that descent. I think she is, yeah. Emily Johnson from Canada. There she is. Yeah. The Canadian riders tend to be extremely technically gifted. Big, big scene in Canada. Yeah, track uh, development team. Future team, it's called. So, as we say, two options at the base of this climb. Both fairly, fairly similar in terms of difficulty. Not really going to lose too much time, but the riders will develop a preferred option. And then they come together to, right when the climb is at its steepest towards the top of it. Just about here. And now it looks like uh, Sophie Haby is uh, struggling a little bit here on this climb. And you see Benia. Kalewori is strong on these steep climbs. He really is, yeah. yeah. Ronja Blocklinger now second place, and then we have Sophie Heby on third. I want to see a replay of Blurtlinger uh, through that drop section again. I've made that face before, that got away with it face. Really nice flowy section through here, not that these riders will have much time to enjoy it. In a month, it, it, it's a bit of time, at least the tension goes off yeah. of your muscle. So uh, even if you have to be concentrated and it costs a lot of energy as well to do it fast, that descent, at least the, the, the tension is gone for a second. And that's where, Bar, I guess, just bike time and bike skills come into play. If you're confident on the sense yeah, and you yeah, don't yeah, think too yeah, much yeah, about them, you can yeah. get a chance to recover. Yeah, and that, that, that's how it is. And if you have to, to struggle to hold the pace, uh, it costs so much energy. A lot of potential for crashing as well when you start trying to force the pace on the stance. Yeah, but Ginia Caliori, now she's fast actually in the descent. Yeah, maybe she was sandbagging all along. She's uh, disappearing <laughs> quiet. <laughs> maybe. Commentator's also, curse uh, part, we I thought mean, she was done for the day. And but I think also some of the, 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 the descents are very steep and rocky yeah. and technical. And like that last one is actually not that steep, but very fast and very flowy to ride. Maybe that's where she's losing it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That suits her at least a little bit better, looks like. So Ginia Caluori now leading the race. On the Tumas Light Rider full suspension machine. A bike that really has been finessed by the likes of Keller. Matthias Flukiger. Yeah, Matthias Flukiger. And Ralph Neff himself, I'm sure he'll have had yeah. a finger to the side. Another about young it. guy now riding elite as well, Vital Albin. Uh, Vital Albin, yeah. Okay, last uh, Friday, yesterday it was. So this is the, to the tech feed zone, Blurtlinger rolls but through. She is on the left side, it means a technical problem for Blocklinger. It she is on the left hand side, so what is going on here? We don't see it, but she was looking for, for a technical support team. Oh, there she's missed it. it, she's missed she it, and she's having it. to go back to her rear, rear wheel. wheel. It always costs a lot of time. It's Riders are stressed, time. And you mechanics will, are stressed. You will see this in the pits before the race. Uh, mechanics riders practicing those wheel changes. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to. Because for this every very reason, counts. every second counts. Yeah. Oh, it's a shame for her. Now, are we going to see... The winner from last Thursday, short track, when you're blocking up. Oh, she's still Lost there. A lot of time. Axel's going back in. And the rear wheel is even more difficult than the front wheel, of course. Yeah, you have to cassette, you have to chain. And all, of yeah. course, the, 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 the disc brake has to fit into uh, the, the brake pads. Ronya trying to be helpful there, trying to get involved in it, but that axle not wanting to go in. And lift factory team. Yeah, solid rear axles on, well, most modern 
mountain bikes now, Bart, but no quick release lever as you might no find other release. places. It's <laughs> as the complication. It doesn't work with the uh, with, uh, nope. brakes, actually. <laughs> no, it does not indeed. Better to be uh, safe and have a, a true axle. A big, big chasing group. Yep. So we caught Kurt at the end. Cuthbert, yeah, on the back end of this one. Nicole Garnier, fifth. McLean Howell from Great Britain in sixth. Yeah, strong ride for McLean Howell. Yeah. Young rider, the youngest of this group. Strong in cyclocross, strong on the roads. And now, first year under 23, Ella McLean Howell. So many multidiscipline riders now, Bart, from all over yeah, the yeah, cycling yeah. They, universe. They, they, especially on a young age, they combine different uh, disciplines. And is that, is that for them to get as much experience on as many different bikes as possible to work out what their strongest suit is and where they yeah, need to devote yeah. their time? It Unless they're Tom Pidcock <laughs> winning, it's all of them. <laughs> Or uh, Matthew van der Poel. Or Matthew van der Poel, yep, your, your compatriot. Actually, uh, Wout van Aert, it's, uh, we haven't seen him that much actually in no. mountain bike, but if it comes down to cyclocross and road, yeah, he's built best too. Why haven't we seen him much in a mountain bike part? Well, just have a look at I this. Let's have a look at this wheel change. And she's away again, yeah. Lurtlinger. Yeah, she lost a lot of time a with uh, of that change wheel. So, uh, yeah, why? Uh, yeah, if you want, that might be. Uh, yeah, also with the reason for Ginia Kaluori that she's taking it a bit more carefully in the descent, so she lost a little bit of a, a few seconds, but uh, Ronja Blokhenov, she's so fast, but also, yeah, to have a flat tire, the risk is so much higher. Yeah. I wonder if that was a puncture, though. It didn't look that flat it in the way. It didn't look like that, you're right, it yeah. May have been an issue with the rear axle, maybe, or something, or a rotor, or... Yeah, because it felt still OK, uh, the yeah. pressure, yeah. That's what I thought, too, about what they could the way see. Through. Now, it, these cross-country racers do run extremely low tyre pressures, but you do tend to see it if they've gone flat enough for them to come into the tech zone. It is, yeah. Lumi Garnier from France. Riding for the Scott Kreuze Oxygen team. Wow, Sophie Haley yeah. Patterson strong in this descent. Absolutely no fear at all down for that rock section. Yeah, Ginia Carlori a little bit. That is where down. she's gapping her, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She does it again. Two but, then, but then we saw Kaluri punch back on these little climbs, so we might have a interesting race. We might have an interesting race, a bit of punch it and counter punching going on here. It is. But if you have to close that gap all the time, it costs so much energy. Ginia Carlori. And just mentally, I guess, too. Yeah, but of course, if you can do it all the time, also for Sophie, it's annoying that when riders come back even... I think you're putting that very politely, <laughs> annoying, yeah. <laughs> you try to get away and then suddenly she's... Suddenly she's, she's there again. again. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Six seconds in yeah. the gap. Similar in the previous lap uh, on and this point see, of the course. You can see the Swiss rider just have to tap a few more watts on to close it again. She's a very light, strong on the climbs. Yeah, some of the, the power to weight ratios of these under 23 riders, both in men's and women's, absolutely spectacular. The power they can summon up whilst carrying so little weight. And look, she's right back with her. Yeah, but it is, I think also the camera is short. She's not right on there yet. There's still a bit of a gap. Emily Johnson now on third place from Canada on her own. A little bit of a gap to, I think it's Sarah Kortinova on fourth place. I'm excited to know what, if anything, Ronja Plertlinger has got left in her locker in terms of being able to catch the front oh, but of the she lost so much time in yeah. that uh, wheel change. She will uh, move up a little bit. Emily Johnson, track future team. It's great to see the clear lenses on the glasses as well, Bart. You can see where the eyes are going and the, the yeah, look of concern. Actually, the, forest, the forest here is quite dark. Mm -hmm. And also, there's a lot of dark clouds coming in. So you need to have a clear vision and 
Yeah, most of the riders, they like to have a clear vision when they are riding. But sometimes as well, we can get the direct sunlight through here, and it's very dappled and very hard to see the holes in this. So yeah. maybe that's why the, dark, the darker lenses, the tinted lenses, some have gone with them. But it's quite late in the, during, on the day already, so you, we see more clear lenses, it's true. Madigan Monroe as there well. Is. Zoe yeah. Cuthbert on the left-hand side here, just going to the left-hand side here, shot. Mumi and there now. is Blitlinger. Yeah, there she is. Virginia now leading these two back together again. No, not quite. <laughs> not that long. Sophie Heavy saying, I'll just lead us to the top of this one. Yeah, especially when it comes down to these technical parts of the course that uh, Expert Clown won. She likes to be in front. And it, when it comes down to the descents as well, here is Ronja Blocklinger after a uh, real change. And you could just see in that wheel change bar, I mean, Liv, one of the most pro teams out there, but once you introduce that element of stress, all the plans go out the window, don't they? It is, yeah, it's the stress, <laughs> it's a big fact. Yeah. Yeah, everybody has to stay calm in a situation like that. Which is very easy to say from a lovely yeah, warm yeah. commentary <laughs> booth. But from here, <laughs> not if you are there, as you like to do it as quick as possible. But you are seeing uh, here at the UCI Mountain Bike World Series, I mean, these aren't your average bike shop mechanics, and no disrespect to them at all, but these are the very best bike mechanics in the world. They are, they? they are. And, it's, uh, and it's almost a sport in itself. It is, yeah. There, there, there's, there's a kind of a competition in between these, these people, too. They, they, and, but also, they are nervous if, uh, before the race. They, they, even they, they cross their fingers when the start goes on uh, about any technical problems. Uh, yep. They, they do their best to have the bikes in the best shape. The running joke with many of them is that it's actually it, their bike and the riders just borrow it. And they spend a lot of time uh, to yeah. prepare the bikes really well. It's a, the suspension, the tires, the drivetrain. Yeah, a lot of technology these days into these bikes. Kidia so, Calori a little bit off now from uh, Sophie Heavy Patterson. Yeah, Heavy Patterson. Hard to know with this one, Bart. We've seen uh, we've seen the six or seven uh, second mark hit a couple of times, and then all of a sudden they're right back together again. So a hard one to call. But it looks like Sophie Pet uh, Heavy Pedersen is a bit fast on the descent, so she might open the gap a little bit more. We the are next one, and she's almost at the top of that climb again. We are predicted some rain this evening, but I don't think we're going to see it towards the end of this one. And if we do. It's unlikely to make. There's Eva Lechner just in the corner of the screen. Racing tomorrow. Racing tomorrow, the Italian, of course. A great racer as well. Big results over the years. Yeah. yeah he's in second, second place, uh, 2020, so yeah. just a few years ago. And uh, World Championships, silver medalist. I think someone's let uh, Kaluri know that she's... Uh, she's doing damage in those descents, because it looks like she's really sending it on now down there. Changing lines. Kaluri now just again, slightly more panic looking, knowing that she's got to close that gap. Emily Johnson. As we eagerly await the leaders to come down, this section is a brand new feature of our 2023 course. Usually our Nova Mesto course drops into the pump track, but now they've created these brand new whoop whoops here with a couple of cheeky double jumps. It's a different dirt, it's a different terrain, but it also allows the riders to come down here, take a breath. It allows uh, a little bit of color <laughs> to be seen. We see a couple of riders coming down here and have a bit of a whip have a bit of a turn bar, the crowd loves it. Um, and it looks quite simple, but these gaps are about three to four meters long. And on a cross country bike, when you've just been climbing for the last nine to 10 minutes, it can be quite a daunting scenario, but lots of fun for the riders, lots of fun as they come back down into the arena, take a breath before a massive big sprint finish all the way into a cheering crowd to finish your race day. Looking forward. 
catching a flat. Looks like she caught one of those steep little, uh, sharp little roots on the Cannondale BMX steps out the back. They're quite hard to see. A lot of those steps are blind. So when you come into it, you don't exactly know if there's a hole or a rock or a root and you have to be extremely precise. Again, we mentioned it before in the course preview, the low tyre pressure is a big feature of the new cross-country race bikes. And those particular sections, you're going fast, you're going over blind drops, and that low pressure can really catch you. When you catch a route, you've only got like 15 to 20 psi, like one bar, maybe 1.1. So it's a very technical section. It can it can cost you the race, as we said before. Also, it won't make you the race, but it will cost you the race. So as we come into this final little section here, as we we're coming into the final couple of laps, this is where it counts. If you're in a good position mentally, physically, we're about to start ramping it up here. Ronya might be a bit of stress creeping in there. We'll see if she can make it up. She only lost about a minute and a half, a minute and a bit. She seemed quite calm in the in the tech zone, considering where we were earlier. It can be made up and there's time to play for here. Good gap here. Good gap through. This is quite a decisive gap here. Good gap to second and look at the gap here back to third. These two riders have stamped their authority on the first round of the season here. Now this could just send shock waves through the under 23 women's field here. Look at the gap. It's daylight to third. Whoa. Here we go. Some water going in then for the number 13 bike of Jania Kaluri. Two more laps. Two laps to go here in Novo Mesto. Namarave. I like the arch. Yeah, the Beautiful. arch is good, isn't it? It's yeah. really good. Full of animation and uh, information for the spectators here in the Fisuchina Arena. Into the first corner. And now the speed is high, pushing hard. It's time. Down the escalator descent then. Second place, Genia Carlori. I get the feeling Calori is going to have to do something on this next lap to rein that in. Two to go. Emily Johnston. Strong ride for her. Is it harder when you're by yourself, Bart, when you haven't got another rider to sort of around you to judge? I mean, on, on some parts of the course, it's not uh, handy at all if there are so many riders in front of you or around you, but. Here on the start-finish straight, there's still a little bit of a headwind. It would be nice to sit in someone's wheel and save a little bit of energy, but when the gap is there, you have to push hard also on sections like this, and they are a little bit boring, actually, to ride. Is it hard to gauge that effort? You know, is it hard to sort of work out, I need to push on, or can I just sort of sit at this tempo? It is, <laughs> especially if you're pushing too hard, especially here on the flat, there you blow up uh, very easily in the next climb. Sara Kortinova, Santa Cruz team. Noemi Garnier from France. Behind her. Yes, she's not suffering at all. Looks like that. Of course, I'm sure she is. I'm sure she'd probably <laughs> beg to differ with you on that one, Bart. But she does look like she's ticking things off here. It looks good for Sophie so Looking far. Looking good for Sophie Heavy Patterson. There is your top 10. Rowing it out by Fury. Samara Maxwell from Australia. Top Seven 10 place. Top 10 cover by with just under 90 seconds. This really is setting the scene beautifully. I'm wetting the appetite ahead of the first UCI mountain bike cross country Olympic World Cup elite level racing tomorrow. And uh, Bart and I were both asked for our predictions ahead of that one. And I think uh, a 20, 25 minute long debate sort of sparked off because there are so many riders who could win an elite level.
this year, it feels in like. E actually, it, it's in each category. In each category. To, to, to predict the winner, it's so difficult. It feels like, yeah, it, oh, it so almost feels like every single race is going to be like a finals <laughs> this year. It's just so hard to predict. It is. Yeah, actually, Samara Maxwell, of course, she's from New Zealand and not from Australia. Sorry for that. You're very honest, part. It's very good with the corrections. Well, uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I don't like to make mistakes. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I don't know, but yet they come. Yeah, especially, I mean, woman under 23, we see so many new names uh, very oh. quickly all the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but for us, it's also uh, a couple of them are new, especially you, this season again. I First tell round. What, I tell you what, Bart, Pedersen's been good in the climbs, but she's made some real gaps in those descents. She's strong, yes. She has the experience around by a good team, experienced riders. Also her brother, Gustav uh, Pettersson. He's uh, riding uh, very strong in the men in the 23 category. And He's a bit younger than she is. The UCI Mountain Bike World Series kicked off earlier on this year, whenever we headed down under to Tasmania with the en Enduro Mountain Bike crew. Enduro, if, you're, uh, if you haven't seen that before, similar to a car rally, a lot of um, stages, descents, and then cumulative time makes time it up. Stages. Yeah, time stages. And that's one of the big skills in that format, is being able to learn lines quickly. Only one run of practice. I guess the same across country bar. You need to know every inch of the track. And yeah, riders, right, they, they, they spend a lot of time uh, to practice on the course. Sometimes, in my mind, I think even sometimes too much, because riding, even riding on a course, doing all these climbs, costs so much energy, costs so yeah. much effort. And yeah, you have to be fresh in front and, and to start a race like this. And uh, yeah, I, I, I try to inform my riders. It's, it's really necessary to do and uh, check out the course very precisely, but tr try and try to save some energy before the start of the race. It becomes, it's a big part of Enduro as well, before we went to one run of practice only, that it's almost counterproductive because all you start to see are the changes in the track and not rely on your skills as a bike rider to just be able to go fast. No, and uh, what you said, uh, yeah, the course is changing all the time, and you're, even the uh, lines are changing all the time, and especially when, also for tomorrow, uh, rain is predicted, yeah, then uh, yeah, yeah, you have to uh, choose different lines, uh, different tyre choices as well, yeah. so it's a completely new course sometimes. It's, it's, part, like of, that. Uh, it's part of the uh, double-edged sword of being an elite-level racer as well, is that you're the last to race on the track, so it will have evolved the most from the start of the week, so you have to adjust your riding accordingly. Mm -hmm. Emily Johnson still looking good. I think she's used to ride in conditions like this, uh, a lot of routes all over the place. Yep, don't seem to be phasing her. The noise level's picking up here in Nova Mesto, Namarave, one of the absolutely classic cross-country venues and let me tell you as loud as it sounds in there at the minute it is nothing on what race day for the elites will be like tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow yeah <laughs> Annie last the british national champ actually told me earlier in the weekend that you don't so much hear the noise here as feel it she said it pushes you around the whole way the czech fans going absolutely wild in the aisles for the cross-country racing Back to the race, back to the leader. Here, it, here she is. One of the rare, quieter parts of the track, just as they say that the cowbells kick off. A little bit of time for Sophie to relax. Drop a seat post down again. Flying over, ooh, flying over these woods. Back wheel just getting a bit of a kick there. Actually, that's, that section over there, man will jump it. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite narrow, but if you have enough speed, you can make it. Have you jumped apart? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I have a policy, Rex don't fly. So wheels on the ground, that's the safest yeah, yeah, yeah. Wheel, Wheels on the ground. 19 seconds then, the gap, Pedersen, Kaluri. Yeah, I think Pedersen is literally not figured of he ridden away from Kaluri in this one. There she is, Kaluri. She'll perhaps be happy with second place, Bart, but not that happy of how quickly that gap opened up in the second half of this race. Yeah, but still, I mean, second place, it's quite good, I think, for her. For the first time, podium, Gina Carolori. I'd be interested just to get a, an update on where Blurtlinger is as well, how she's progressing after that mechanical that saw her yeah, taking Emily, out the front of this one. Emily Johnson from Canada still on third place. 
Sarah Kochkinova in fourth place, Numi Garnier fifth, Ella McLean Howell in sixth place, and Alberi in seventh. Blocking out 12 at the moment. Kaluri almost looking like she's enjoying that bar at the scent. Definitely not enjoying this climb. Look at that from the other angle. That's just about as putrid as it gets. And see these root, roots everywhere. It's, it's, it's like Paris Roubaix, it's also with the cobblestones. Yeah, it's mountain biking's cobblestones, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the roots are the cobblestones. They are, they really Roubaix. are. It's, in the dry, they offer very little grip, and in the wet, there's no grip. No. And it disturbs your rhythm all the time. So yeah. the, 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 the tire pressure absorbs actually all these little vibrations, these bur bumps, and uh, that's why the tire pressure is so important. And that is uh, one of the reasons why they run such low tire pressures in cross country bar, isn't it? They've worked out that the energy yeah. that they can save. Yeah. And also for more grip. Yep. Yeah. On the climbs, uh, braking, uh, cornering. I have to say, if you haven't ridden a modern cross country race bike before, as somebody who habitually rides an enduro bike, I find it very, very difficult to adopt to those tires. They're just. There's so, little, there's so little tread on them. You never really know what, what they're doing on you. And, and actually, we tried to have no tread on it. Yeah, <laughs> ideally slick, yeah, but it's just, just... As a bike rider, it takes you a little while to get your head around. A little while, a few good crashes, then you start to figure it out. But actually, you can adjust your... your how do I do say? Your, your, your grip with the tire pressure. Yeah. The lower the pressure, the more grip you have. Up to a point. Up to, up to a point. <laughs> <laughs> up to a very dramatic point, yeah. That's how it is, yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. I tried it a few times and it, it looked like a light aircraft had come down, but... 22 seconds 22 now seconds for Carlo. Down, yeah. Sophie Heavy Pedersen. It's looking good for her. Looking good for her, not quite home and host yet, but not far off. Emily Johnson now on third place. Looking good for her too, I think she's happy with that. I think she would be bar, and you, yeah, yeah. one of the things that you do you do kind of forget about um, being European based in terms of mountain biking is just how big an effort it is. These flyaway rounds for the Canadians, it's for the Australians, the for, Kiwis. Yeah, but she's living uh, for a long time around uh, the Hyming area with uh, the team, the Track Future Racing. Uh, a couple of more riders, uh, Bjorn Rayleigh is living uh, over there too. Uh, and yeah, they motivate each other as well, uh, staying yeah, together, yeah. training together, and uh, yeah, not flying over the ocean all the time. Oh, ah, struggling. Oh, yeah, but she's got time to play with, but small gear she has recovered quite quickly on that climb. And that's, yeah, you can see just a little lapse of concentration. It can all go wrong quite quickly. A little wake up call, maybe for your leader, Pedersen. 22 seconds it was in the previous split time. Different line over there, nice, nice one. These on shots the from the FPV drone, absolutely stunning. Amazing. One of the big advances that we are bringing you this season. Everything leveling up a bit including the race, and we've been treated to two absolute belters this evening. The rock and roll from Nova Mesta Namorava. There she is right now. Past one of the many grandstands that line these woods. A venue that's really grown over the years. Another two seconds found in there. Every time Pedersen goes into the woods, she finds two seconds, it seems. And increases her gap. Kaluri not hanging around dealer, though. Not that far off, I mean, 24 seconds, it's not that much. If you think about the time the Plurtlinger lost in the tech zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not insurmountable. Who is that in front of her? A back marker, then yeah, Pedersen coming around. Marker. She will see her. Also pushing hard here on the flat. Last lap, if she crossed the finish line, it goes quick. Olivia Onesti just getting out of her way there. And look back over her shoulder. One more deep dive then for Pedersen.
Dania Kaluri. No checking behind her bar. No, no problems. It's looking good for her two second place so far. Final lap. On the number 13, Tumas. Lap time's around 13 minutes. Not hanging around. 12.43 for Sophie Petter Hedersen. Pedersen then at the bottom of this climb one last time. Has a quick look over the shoulder. She won't see anyone. Here is third place. Third place, Emily Johnson. Last lap for her too. Emily Johnson just giving that track one more gear. Strong ride for her. Yeah, very strong. She'll be happy with this part. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure. Well, she can see her at this point in the track. It is, yeah, it's true. Half a, half a minute in between these two. Top three. Patterson, Kaluri, Johnson. Denmark, Switzerland and Canada. One more lap to go. 3.1 kilometers here, the lap of this year's iteration of the Novo Mesto Namarave circuit. How do you think this one stacks up Bart, in terms of the uh, the tough tracks we've had here over the years with that slightly longer that slightly more climb heavy final section oh here it is nicely done yeah nicely done <laughs> nicely done <laughs> and then jumps over to the riders left hand side yeah compared to different uh, venues i mean next time uh, Lanzerheide. I mean, that's altitude, 1,500 meters. They're definitely riders, they will prepare themselves for yeah. a little bit of uh, elevation. Uh, so going on altitude training, probably. I think you're going to think do, you're gonna have to do a bit more work in the commentary that weekend, Bart. <laughs> I've been there before, and the altitude is not my friend. <laughs> no problems for me. I like, <laughs> I like the altitude, actually. No, but uh, and it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, area. Oh, it's uh, stunning, yeah. yeah Lanzerheide is absolutely beautiful. beautiful. But a busy yeah. weekend for you with uh, downhill uh, as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A and very one, busy weekend. One or two things going on, but, um, but the altitude... No, no uh, worries. <laughs> the altitude is something that, um, if you're going to win a World Cup overall title, you've got to be able to deal with, because we go to uh, Andorra as well. For, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Power but and also, sound. Uh, uh, snowshoe, it's 1,500 yeah. meters too. We have a couple of them uh, on altitudes. And that is something that a lot of, I know Evie Richards has done a lot of uh, this off season, spending some time training at altitude can help you. She has been in, uh, uh, in uh, Andorra for altitude training. Yeah. We will see more from her tomorrow. But I mean, every venue has its own character. I would say uh, Leo Gang, it's maybe an old school course with a lot of climbing. Yeah. Maybe the weather conditions might play a big role over there too. But yeah, I think Monsenden is one of the most technical courses I know. I'm excited about that. I'm excited <laughs> for the finals coming down to Mont Saint Anne because it's such a ferocious track. It is. And if we go there with some titles on the line, oh, oh yeah, 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 it's going to be drama. Yeah. But also Valdisol, uh, Italy, it's it's a beautiful course, a very technical course as well. At least one part of the course is very technical. The other part is actually uh, yeah more more flat and more climbing and more speed. Yep. So uh, yeah. Each, each, each venue has its own character, for and sure. That is the beauty of the UCI Mountain Bike World Series. If you're going to win an overall title, you've only one choice. You're going to do it the hard way. Uh, the uh, hard. And you have to be very consistent. And you have to be very consistent. Doesn't matter what the weather's doing, doesn't matter what altitude you're at. You need to be up there. Let's have a look when at the top 20 now in the 17th place, so she dropped back a little bit. She Three was... minutes back of the leader, yeah. yeah. So it's more than a uh, technical problem. Some fire in the belly then for Blertlinger as we head the lens or hide it. A lot of nationalities also in the under 23 races. Yep, fully international field. But the number one bike, the number one Villiers piloted by this woman, Sophie Heavy Patterson. 
up this climb for the last time. She'll be glad to see the back of it. Yeah, officially there's not a UCI under 23 ranking, but of course, when they have their own race, they will have their own ranking made for this uh, kind of racing. So that's why she has the number one plate on her bike. Yeah, it's one of the difficult things actually about researching this race was that so many different federations have so many different age brackets that it's quite hard to work out who's going to be here. Yeah, so maybe some work to do for the UCI to make it simple or like uh, a filter in it. Yeah, would be nice. Some work to do for me to keep up with all this, but yeah. There we go, the number 13, Thomas. Ginia Cavallori. I think Ralph Nath is going to be quite a happy team manager after this yeah. performance from her. Good start for him for the weekend. Small more, more action from uh, his team. That Thomas squad is Shallow. strong now, isn't it? Won uh, both disciplines yeah. uh, last season, two titles. The return of Matthias Flukiger as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch out for him. Vital Albin. He likes this course. He does like this course. Especially in the wet. It is, I was going to say, if it rains tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know if Matthias Flukiger can do a rain dance, but if he can, he's doing one now in the pits. Emily Johnson is pushing hard. Able to make it to the yep. second place. Wide Carori, not that far in front of her. Sara Cortinova on fourth place. Just staying ahead of Cortinova. And then we have Numi Garnier from France, a little bit further down. Last lap. 31 seconds to the good now, Patterson. As she takes off each of these sections one by one. No problems for her. She's enjoying it. Yep. Riding on a course like this. A just very demanding course. Just keeping the concentration in check as yeah, well, Bart. Just keeping to. the focus. Yeah, she has to. So easy to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Out of the saddle at the bottom of that descent. Yeah, when it comes down to the end of the race, the gaps are bigger between the riders. You can see just how chewed up that climb is. It's still a high cadence she's pushing. Yeah, yeah, she hasn't throttled off completely now. Thirty-two seconds now. It's getting bigger and bigger. As you can see, the third place, Emily, Emily Johnson, behind her in the forest. She still has to make that look. She's going to see a mechanic here beside her, starting to pack the tools away. A good sight. Ginia Carliori. You're right, Bart, still pushing a high cadence, still having a good go. Yeah, here. high cadence, which is important if you can push it like that. But it still goes fast. If you get more tired, most of the time, actually, you are riding a, a bigger gear. So, uh, but for these uh, women, it's necessary to keep the cadence high to go fast. Johnston from Canada on third place. Not that far off for the second place. But it's even not that long anymore. Also, she has to push hard. Sarah Gortino from Italy is behind her on fourth place. The gaps in between the riders is there, but still they have to push hard. One more big climb for Sophie Heavy Patterson. Just one more big climb. She likes that jump all the way over the left-hand side there. It's treated her well this race. She's nailed it every time. Same lines all the, every lap again. And that is a sign of good condition, isn't it, Bart? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. precision. She, she has found her rhythm on this course. Metronomic. Right side la lane at the bottom. Ginia Caluori now similar 
to Sophie Heavy Patterson, also here on the right side of the screen. Seems to be the best lane line over there. 31 seconds. And you can see also on climbs like this, the, the suspension actually is unlocked, so that they, have, that they don't feel all the roots all the time, even in the, yeah, if it's a climb. It, it's one of the sort of unspoken benefits of these full suspension race bikes, isn't it? That you can get more grip up climbs with a, with a shock open, the wheel can move up and over obstacles yeah, yeah, and not yeah, slip it, on it. It helps a lot. Johnston now, third place, coming down. Track Future Racing. Here comes Patterson then. Are we in for some rain tonight then, Bart, do you think? Tomorrow, right, uh, late afternoon, that's what the uh, forecast says. Uh, but hopefully it will uh, be dry. But also, yeah, rain. Makes it interesting to watch. <laughs> it's unpredictable. I think some it's of the rides, like you said, Matthias Flickert definitely likes to ride in rainy conditions and slippery conditions. He's always so yep. strong in that. There is just some riders who enjoy that. Uh, just catching the back marker back now. Marker Gets out of the way well France. for her. Yeah, there are definitely some some of the riders who are just maybe that more just technically attuned and just sort of are, uh, I wouldn't say happy when it rains, but certainly more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or better compared to, to the other ones. Yeah, yeah. Good ride, she did. Strong ride for Sophie. She has been the class of the field today. Sophie Heavy Pedersen. The national coach of Denmark must be proud of these youngsters. It's been a good night for the Danes, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen them with uh, strong riders throughout the years, but now it feels like they're really coming to the fore. And a couple of years' time, we could well see them at the front of the elite ranks. Yeah, yeah, it's a matter of time before they perform well in the elite category. Annika Langvad, of course, the, the last big Dane in elite women's. And here she comes in. Somebody who would like to join that same page in history. She starts to smile, she starts to celebrate with the team. Sophie Heavy Pedersen. Just this left-hander to go, checks over her left-hand shoulder. She'll just see two back markers. Second place some way off, but it has been all Pedersen at the front of this one. Sophie Heavy Pedersen heads towards the start-finish line for the last time. And the Dane is going to taste victory here in the Czech Republic. She takes her first UCI mountain bike cross-country Olympic World Cup under 23 victory of the season and she did it in some style bar yeah great style here comes Jania Kaluri then the Swiss rider who put up a good fight she gave it everything a She's great been... performance from her too a great performance as well yeah. hints of the Alessandra Keller she mightn't have got the win today but she's got a bag full of points to take back to Switzerland with her and celebrates it like yep I think she might have worked that out points mean prizes And we have the first and second place celebrate together. It's nice to see always. Yeah. After the face. Always great to Emily see. Emily Johnson also very happy. I think this is an old woman who's going to be very, very happy with her evening's work for Trek Future Racing then. Emily Johnson. Look at the face. Big <laughs> smile. This is a great result for her. Punches the air, third place on the podium. Emily Johnson crosses the line, a great way to start the season. Was on her own for a lot of it, had to stay in the zone, stay focused. Sarah Cortinova from Italy on fourth place. Happy faces. The happy faces. <laughs> A sprint, ah, sprint finish. finish. Well, Burry, take it. Burry will take home that one. Yeah, ahead of Garnier. Numi Garnier on sixth. What a performance.
from her too. A lot of happy people down there, Bart. Ella McLean Mahalo. Yeah, wow. Ella McLean Hall. Great performance. First year she is. I tell you what, Bart, the future is bright, isn't it? With these uh, these under 23 racers, they're racing so tight throughout the field, up and down it. And now riders coming in very quickly after each other. Well, Burry. Exhausted. Well, there we have your winner today. Sophie Heavy Patterson. In reality, no one got closer. She got that big lead at the start of the day. Cleary closed the gap back up. Blurtlinger had her problems. But it was the game who stayed calm, kept it together, and just ticked off the sections and the laps one by one to take the victory. Great camaraderie there down at the finish line. And here is confirmation of those results. Sophie Heavy Pedersen, Tania Kaluri, Emily Johnson, Sarah Cortnova, Noel Fury, Nomi Garnier, Ella McLean Hall, Samara Maxwell, Madigan Munro, and Zoe Cuthbert round out your top ten. Doesn't get much better. Bart just confirming it. Bart just confirming to us throughout that broadcast that yep, all those hard yards in the off season. Is it going to be enough? And finding out that it has just paid dividends. It's a pretty decent feeling. The winner of the cross at country and under 23s of course at Sophie Pedersen uh, it's a day of the Danes today after Oliver's victory just bef the race before uh, you showed fantastic pace uh, extending your lead in the final lap tell us how it went for you yeah it was a super hard and exciting race I just tried to go full gas from the start and then yeah just yeah it was super good super nice where do you think you made the difference today uh, I think I was um, strong on the downhills, so I could get a little gap every time and then just go full gas on the uphills. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think that Ronya's uh, technical problem, uh, what impact do you think that had on the race? Uh, sorry, can you...? What impact did Ronya's re uh, technical have on the race, would you say? I don't know. Um, that, that's hard to tell. She was very strong, so it was yeah, a shame she got a puncture. But, yeah. But a great start to the season for you, so congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And here we are, some pictures of her really soaking up the praise, as well she should. Sophie Happy Person, shouldn't she, Bart? That yeah, was great, quite a ride. A great performance. She had a really fast start. The riders came back to her, but it didn't, didn't bother her at all, and uh, she ran away again uh, when it came down to the final. Yeah, a great performance, actually, what she did. It was incredible, and, and really great to see. We saw in those pictures at the end there, all of those young women celebrating together, really. It felt yeah, as though they great, were... Yeah, great to see. Uh, of course, they all gave everything they had, and... Uh, yeah, they, they were all exhausted, but they are still happy for each other. And also the second and third place, uh, they were happy as well, uh, finishing the race with a good result. Yeah, it seemed as though. So let's give uh, Sophie Pedersen a bit of time, first of all, because she won, what, by 30 seconds in the end. We saw her pushing in the penultimate lap it was, and before we were talking about whether or not eight seconds, is that going to be enough? And then she just stretched the field, but... Yeah, Kalori, uh, she was very strong in the climbs, actually, but she lost a little bit of time all the time in the descent. So I think Sophie Pedersen, she knows her skills. She took uh, a lot of time, actually, in the descent. You can hear, you can see that's here as well in the rock and roll. 
she was way faster than uh, Kaluori was. And uh, yeah, every second count on this course, and uh, with uh, two more laps to go, she went on her own and uh, she uh, extended the gap uh, bit by bit. And uh, 30 seconds, it wasn't that big, but uh, more than enough uh, to take the victory, which was quite unique. Quite impressive, yeah. yeah. And what, what, are, what do the riders have to be thinking about when they're taking those descents? What, what? Uh, you saw uh, uh, Blocklinger, Ronja Blocklinger, she had a, a technical problem. It looks like a, a flat tire. We didn't know exactly because we couldn't see it in detail, but you have to be careful, uh, especially uh, the, the rock gardens with the sharp rocks, uh, low pressure tires. It's easy to fall a pinch flat. And, uh, yeah, and I think uh, Kaluori, she took it more precisely, more carefully. And uh, with everything in mind, uh, all these details in mind, very important. That, that's so how you win a race. We just look, we'll come back to her actually, uh, Heavy Pedersen, because we're just having a tiny little look at the Blocklinger flat or puncture. Not quite sure because the key point is that it cost her what a minute and a half, and that's very very difficult. Hey, you can to make see her. She's entering the tech feed zone. Uh, and she took the tax zone, so you know there's something wrong with mm. her bike. Even she couldn't find her uh, her team immediately, mm. so she was looking for. She went for beyond her. them and yeah. then came back <laughs> she again. Came oh. back. It's such a shame, actually, if you see it like that. It costs so much time. She has uh, a lot of stress. Uh, the whole team has a lot of stress, and then she has to change her rear wheel. Actually, that's the worst wheel, but to take to change, it costs so much time. True axle. Yeah, what I said, the, the, the disc has to fit into the brake pads, uh, the chain has to fit on the cassette, the gears. Yeah, she lost uh, actually way too much. And also after that, uh, she couldn't find her rhythm anymore. And uh, yeah, the, the race was over and she was on the third. Actually, she was leaving the race. Yeah. <laughs> when it happened, so it's a shame that for her. That was a huge disappointment, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? And of course, in that moment, when you have those technical challenges, the key point, I guess, is just to stay calm and hope you can solve it with your team. Yeah, but it's, that's easier but to say. But it was say. too long, really. It was <laughs> <Yeah>. too long. <laughs> it's not that easy to, to do. I mean, they're all uh, stressed, panicked. And if you do it too quick, uh, it, it goes only wrong and uh, it, it costs even more time. Course. And, and we see all of the teams involved in this race is now, you know, everyone is very working hard trying they to get do. to the point yeah, yeah, where yeah. it can be as quick as possible, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, but there Technical are just sometimes... Technical problems are part of mountain biking and uh, the team is working really hard to have everything perfect. Everything perfect, but you can't always have perfection. However, Sophie Happy Patterson, in the end, she can probably feel like she did have some level of perfection. She is, of course, the winner of the under 23s cross country Olympic race. Let's have a little look at the rest of the finishers today because we saw some really good stand up performances from some of these women out there. In particular, Jania Kali Ori, she was fantastic but couldn't quite make up the time. A good performance also from Ella McLean Howell, who finished in the end in seventh. That was my pick. We all know who your pick was of course but it's Again. a one two for you <laughs> oh one and two and oh you are now today for your predictions Good day for me. <laughs> Thank you. he's got all the behind the scenes knowledge because of course he is working but with lots of these young riders um we're gonna hear in fact now from ellen mcclain how she has just been with our reporter with our reporter josh carlson in fact ella fantastic start to your 2023 campaign how did it go for you out there well i was I started on the front row, but I did really well in the short track, um, like just on Thursday. So I was supposed to start further back, but luckily I got on the front row. But my start went completely wrong. Like I unclipped after about two meters and then went back again, but managed to work my way through the whole race. And like with the course, it's always like you're just pushing or you're trying to recover as hard as you can. And it's just like constant effort the whole way around. But yeah, I feel like my first ever and under 23 World Cup, I'm super happy. And you couldn't afford to give up any pace forward or back. It was so tight between the yeah. entire top 10. Yeah, it was definitely like positioning was one of the most important things in the race. Um, like if you, even if you're like you're in a group of three or four, like if you're at the back, gaps can open up so quickly. And like, especially on this course on the downhills, cause they're so technical, you've got to be like really, really focused the whole way around. Um, so it's definitely like a really taxing race mentally and physically. What, is there a part where you could enjoy the track out there? Yeah, definitely. Like all the downhills are really, really fun. And like, I feel like I've improved quite a lot. Like I raced here last year as a junior and I was a little bit slow going down the hills, but definitely this year it was a lot of fun. And like, I've got a full suspension bike this year. So much better than the hard tail on this course. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Fantastic start, congrats. Thank you.
Glad to see that Ella is at least finding a moment to enjoy some of the course. That's good to know. We're going to ask Ginia Calori if she enjoyed her race too. Genia, what a fantastic result it is for you today, coming second here. Your best uh, World Cup result. Um, how do you feel? I, I can't believe, I don't know, I, I think I'm in a film. It's so cool, yeah. It's so amazing, yeah. So excited. So uh, you had showed such fantastic pace. I mean, how were you able to kind of to keep it up and keep really up the top, staying in the top three pretty much throughout the whole, t the whole of the race? I don't know, today I felt so strong and I could do the downhills quite con controlled and concentrated and pushed to the uphill. So, yeah, I felt so strong and was so cool to ride. You finished 11th in short track yesterday. Would you say getting a result like that kind of motivated you to e do even better today? Yeah, of course. I knew that the XO race is my favorite and not the short track. So, yeah, it was super cool to start in the second start row. Yeah, and it was so cool to ride today. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. Our second place finisher there, Junior Calori. And we've gathered up Carlson off the course because he's out on course most of the time, but he's back with us. Josh, good to see you. Oh, it's great to be back here. I mean, I, you can't keep me off the course. I'm way too excited out there watching all the racing and there's just so much action in every possible corner of this uh, Nova Mesto course. What did you pick up for being quite close to the action out there? You were taking in different bits of the course, right? Yeah, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been an interesting day watching the tactics, you know, like as we saw in a lot of the footage from the women's and the men's, um, there's a lot of mistakes to be made in that lapse in concentration. We saw in the under-23 men's with Carter Woods. Even our, our winner just then, she made a mistake out there and almost derailed it. Ronya had a mistake when she launched a little bit too far in those Cannondale steps and her race was over. Um, it was really interesting to watch and see that play out and, and see the attacks play out. It gives us a great example of what's going to happen tomorrow in our elite field when the fireworks are really going to come out. Yeah, so you're talking about the heavy Patterson where she put her foot down on the way through the rock garden. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, and that what what did that just spark her on to think, OK, I need to concentrate a bit more? I mean, it's such a long race, really, isn't it? it, like, is, it is. And those little bits, they make such a big difference. They they also spike your heart rate and they spike your adrenaline and you panic. Um, but trying to recover from that and just move forward is what separates these elite world class athletes from everybody else. And Ronya, like she went just a little bit too far off one of those steps. Those steps are very difficult to judge. It's a blind gap and there's roots and rocks and holes off every single one of them. You're tired, you're going fast, there's roots, it's, there's a lot going on. So that one mistake cost her the race. I mean, she recovered well, but she'll be upset with that performance. Right. And so effectively, this is a lot of learning for all of these women out there. Of course. Yeah, this is round one. And for these under 23 girls, we're looking at the future. Yeah. So there's a lot to learn here. She'll learn. They're young, they're fast, they're they're fiery. <laughs> and it's a good thing. It is a good thing. That even the experienced riders, they will make similar mistakes tomorrow. We will see that. Uh, when the adrenaline is too high, when the pressure is too much. It'll be a lot more grumpy. Yeah, there's always room to, to learn. And... A lot more tears and a lot more grumpy grumpy bits and pieces. And, and uh, they should know better, but... <laughs> We're all, we're all victims of uh, getting a little bit too carried away out there. Yeah, for sure. We can actually right now see the podium. We talk about this and some of the good emotions that are involved in the wonderful sport of mountain biking. It's the emotion of raising your fist in the air as you know that you have won the race. Good to see these women out there celebrating their achievement, but... What a podium. Great, great start of the year in the 23. Oh, that's Emily Johnson, yeah. yeah, 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 quick, yeah, yeah, strong performance from her. And you so could see is... as well the, the happy faces when they're crossing the line, yeah. nice to see that. It was such a brutal race, like, I think the, the constant descents, like, it's a very short climb, punchy, then into a descent, like, they get to enjoy the track a lot. We heard Ella before mention about how fun the downhills are. And they're, they're suffering, <laughs> but they can still enjoy it. If you can yeah. find your rhythm, then, then it's fun to ride. Yeah. But if you are suffering, that is really hard. Well, <laughs> I think for a second out there chasing, like she could see the leader right in front of her up that massive, big, rooty climb. And sometimes that's demoralizing. Sometimes that's invigorating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's an interesting course for that kind yeah, of scenario. Really nice course. Yep. This is probably the image that she had in her mind as she was racing towards the finish there. Sophie Abby-Patterson, a brilliant performance from her and from 
many of the, all of the young women out there today, but these are the ones we're going to be speaking about over the coming months, it looks like. Plenty more to come from these young women and plenty more to come from this weekend, gentlemen. Tomorrow. Because tomorrow, yes, indeed, we do head into the elite cross-country Olympic distance. So there is plenty more racing to come here in Novo Mesto. I hope you're as excited as we are. We're going to start the build-up at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning for the women's elite. Stick with us for that and then for the race. And then we go into the men's. The build-up is at 2.30 and it'll be right here with us. So there it is, confirmation of the start times tomorrow, 11 o'clock right here for the women. And then 2.30, we get underway with our coverage for the men. It is the elite. It is the cross-country Olympic distance. It is more important than ever with this being the time when we're heading into an Olympic year. So I hope you will join us. But Josh, it's been an absolute pleasure. See you tomorrow. Take care, guys.